cybersecurity, governance, risk, and compliance is one of the most important, if not the most important areas of cybersecurity. Also, this is the area where a lot of cybersecurity analysts and even experienced cybersecurity professionals seem to misunderstand what this area is all about. In this video, I will explain to you what GRC is or what governance, risk, and compliance is. I will also tell you how to get into that field, what certifications you can do and what trainings you can do to get, to get into it. But most importantly, I just want to clarify some of those um, misconceptions about this area. Before I do this video, I did a quick search on YouTube to see what people have said about GRC and I could clearly see that there is a lot of misinformation out there from people who may have been working in the field for one or two years or even five years, but in their highly specialized areas, they just can't see the big picture. Let me start with a definition. So governance, risk, and compliance are not unique to cybersecurity. So just be mindful that these terms can be used for other areas for the business. But for the purposes of this video, I'll break it down into three points. So governance is all about making sure that your process is governed by the business. What does that mean? So as a chief information security officer, or even as an information security manager, um, is your cybersecurity program actually aligned with the business? Does senior business stakeholders know what you do? Does your function actually support the business? When you have big purchases, do you involve uh, the CEO or the CIO or chief, even chief operating officer? Depends on the business. This is sort of what governance mean or one element of governance. Risk. Risk is all about determining the impact uh, of an event and the likelihood of an event. For example, when we say, okay so our company is vulnerable to ransomware attack so risk management is all about okay so what's the likelihood of a ransomware hitting us and what's the impact let's say the likelihood is high um, for a ransomware attack because you don't have enough um, security professionals or security controls in place so in this case you can do things like penetration testing and you can um, remediate those findings and you can perhaps fortify your information security to reduce the likelihood of a ransomware attack from happening. You never eliminate it completely, you just reduce it, reduce it, and then we say, well, we have a reduced residual risk. The impact of the ransomware attack is probably high. Um, ransom attack can um, make businesses uh, go bust. Some businesses go bankrupt because of ransomware attacks. So these are the things that are the duties of the GRC consultant or the GRC manager. It's a very important role because within information security, we understand what a ransomware is. But outside of that business unit, people in accounting or finance or um, C-level executives, they hear the word somewhere in the news but they don't really know what it means and they usually don't understand why are we still vulnerable in spite of all the investment that we make so that's the importance of risk compliance is the last part of the GRC compliance is basically what obligations exist that your organization need to comply with from a legal point of view for example financial institutions um, across the world need to comply with a standard called PCI DSS in Australia we have various standards we've got the ASD 8 and we have um, the information security manual for government organizations we also have a standard called CPS 234 for financial services. Essentially, those standards exist so that your organization is regulated. Let me give you an example. So if you are a financial services institution, by definition, you deal with people's money, with people's financial information. So a regulator body or a regulation body is a government entity that want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence for information security. So they've got these standards and those standards can be, you know, you need to have proper firewalls, you need to have proper encryption, you need to have um, continuous monitoring and testing, all these good things that we know need to happen. Uh, compliance is just a way for the regulator to make sure that you're doing your due diligence. So all of these are broad areas. Like if you are a penetration tester, usually you don't get to deal with this area of the world. And you're usually wondering why are the GRC people running around with spreadsheets while I'm here, you know, penetration testing and I'm here configuring firewalls, this stuff matters. Well, 
a big picture, this stuff is very, very important. Um, I lost count of the number of businesses who have excellent security analysts and excellent penetration tester, and they were doing what they thought was enough security. But once you look at a compliance program, you'll find foundational things missing, like a DLP function, not just a DLP tool, but a whole function. I've got a short video that explains what data loss protection is all about. It's not just a tool. If you are a security engineer, it's really easy to confuse having tools with actually having good security. The other thing that I found is confusing for GRC is individuals who specialize in security engineering or in technical fields seem to forget that businesses exi exist to generate money or some in government organizations, for example, they exist to serve a purpose and that purpose is not to be the most secure business out there. So whether the businesses exist to generate money or service the public or a hospital exists to treat patients, these are not organizations that exist to provide cyber security. Security is there to enable the business. I hope now it's clear to you what's, what GRC is. Now I'm going to tell you how to get into the world of GRC and audit and what certifications you need to do to get into that field. So the first thing is you need to get an entry level role, usually and traditionally those roles exist within the big four accounting firm. So Deloitte, EY, PwC and KPMG. There are some smaller companies also like I think RSM and there is so many of them out there that basically will hire you as a junior you might get an engagement to go to a financial institution and conduct a compliance assessment on whether they are compliant with CPS 234 or with a PCI DSS. So you will look at the standard and you will see if that company is meeting that standard. So how would you do that? Well, you can meet stakeholders, conduct workshops with them, inspect documentation. And I think that's the tricky part that technical cyber security people don't like, but Trust me, it's very, very important. It's one thing to know how to configure a firewall and stuff. It's another thing to have that documented. You see, I've seen businesses where the experienced engineers knew all the processes, but no one else knew that. And once those people left the organization, everyone left scrambling. So it really is important to ensure that these things are in place. So that's how you can start in the field. You can also be an experienced SOC analyst or an experienced penetration tester, and you wanna move to GRC, it's actually easier to do it that way because you already have some experience. You already know, for example, what a firewall is. You already know what encryption is. Like you need to be really familiar with those systems before you can audit them. So it's, it's a catch 22. You need experience to do it, but you need to do it to get experience, just like every other field in cybersecurity. But yeah, traditionally you start with a big four or you even can start in a bank. So banks hire a lot of grads to do this type of work. We need a lot of people in these areas. There is a lot of demand and we need people with technical skills and also people skills. We need someone who can talk to stakeholders, someone who can talk to the business, someone who can go through documentation and be diligent with documenting and writing everything down and it's a very good skill to have. Now the certifications, uh, everyone's most favorite topic. Like I told you before doing this video, I've, I've did a quick search on YouTube, which is something I don't usually do, to see what videos out there for GRC and the certification recommendations were horrible. Okay, let me simplify it. So as far as audit is concerned, it, people don't really care about certifications. Um, if they see that you've done this job for two years, that's all that matters. If they see that you're someone with experience, that's probably all that matters. However, every now and then you will see certifications that are usually desirable, not essential. Sometimes they're essential. I'm not gonna say that they're never essential, but in my experience, if someone have the knowledge, we don't care if they have a cert. But if you wanna have the cert and have the knowledge, then the gold standard for IT audit is really ISACA. So ISACA have CISA and they have CISM and CRISC. So CISA is for IT audit, CISM is for information security management, really similar to CISSP. And then we have CRISC. CRISC is focused on the risk management. So the risk part of GRC. So those three are the gold standard, I would say. The only issue with those three cert is they want to be certified. You need to have five years of experience in the field. And that's really challenging for someone to have five years of experience, especially if you're trying to get that cert to get into audit. It's a good certification if you've been doing um, security analyst for a SOC or you've been an engineer for a while or you've been even an IT system administrator, that experience can count towards those certifications. So you can get certified 
certified. I recommend you start with CISA because in my view that's the easiest one, then you can do CISM and CRISC in any order you like. ISACA certifications are not exactly difficult. You just need to sign up to ISACA and you need to do the questions and answer database that comes with ISACA subscription. And the exam is really not similar in, in the sense that the questions are the same, but you get the gist of what they want you to know. In my opinion, I found them easy. Some people found them difficult because the questions are a bit wordy. Maybe if English is not your first language, you might struggle with it a bit. Um, so you might just need to study a little bit more. ISACA have an IT audit certificate for beginners. Look, I don't really recommend it because no one heard of it. I've seen people recommending CAP from ISC2. I don't really recommend any of that stuff because people don't really know. Uh, as far as audit is concerned, of if you have CISA, I think that's more than enough. What I really recommend for people is if you want to be a good security consultant for GRC, if you want to know your stuff, I recommend doing also some technical certifications like um, cloud certifications or even penetration testing certification. This will make you a very powerful consultant because People who only do GRC, they usually have a, some kind of weakness in the technical area. So if you happen to combine technical knowledge with consulting and GRC knowledge, you will be golden and will be highly employable. Uh, watch my video about cloud certifications and how to do them. You don't need experience to do that. So I've recommended that for so many of the junior GRC consultants that have been coaching and they've done cloud certifications and they made them a lot more comfortable when they do compliance assessments and whatnot. I hope this video was helpful. As always, uh, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe and have a look at my video about cloud certifications. It really complements the GRC skills.